Hello everyone, I am your physics teacher and today we're going to be looking at section 2.1 from the Nelson textbook and please make sure you follow along so that way you get a good understanding of vectors in two dimensions. So I'm going to show you how we can represent them on a Cartesian coordinate system, how to add them, and that way you get a better understanding of the motion in two dimensions. So let's look at question number one draw a Cartesian coordinate system and on this Cartesian coordinate system they want us to draw each of the following vectors starting at the origin so the Cartesian coordinate system is just the X and Y plane that you're familiar with from grade 9 nothing special uh, but in this, we're just going to practice how to read the directions. So notice that for A, the displacement vector, delta D, is 8 centimeters south 15 degrees east. So one way that you can read this is to make sure that when you look at the square brackets, the first part is where you're starting, then the degrees that you're rotating towards. So let's write this down. Two words. So our first displacement vector then, if we are looking at starting from the east, we're going to rotate 15 degrees. Oh, sorry, I messed it up. We're starting from the south direction. So starting south, we're going to be rotating 15 degrees towards east. So we could draw our first displacement vector. Delta D1. Now, I don't have a ruler here, so we're just going to assume that that's 8 centimeters. But I think the more interesting part is just to practice with the directions for vectors. Okay, for B, our displacement vector is 5.7 centimeters. The direction is going to be north, starting north, rotating 35 degrees west. So starting north, we're going to rotate 35 degrees west. And we have our second displacement vector. Remember that they ask us to put the tail, or in other words, the vector starting at the origin. So there's our second displacement vector. And for the third vector, they want us to start from north and rotate 18 degrees east. So starting north, you rotate 18 degrees east delta d3 uh, these are not really to scale but I just wanted to emphasize the direction so that way you can get more familiar with these and for question number two they ask us how could you express the direction of each vector listed in question one differently so that it still describes the same direction vector. So see, I want to make sure that we emphasize direction. So if we were to look at our first displacement vector, notice that instead of starting south and rotating east, we could start from east and rotate south. So we could write the direction starting east and to figure out how many degrees we need to rotate south, remember that we're dealing with Cartesian coordinate systems, so it's always 90 degrees. So 90 minus 15 will be 75 degrees south. So again, Cartesian coordinate system, we're taking advantage that is 90 degrees. So if we know one piece of the angle, we just subtract from 90 to get the other part. So that's another way we can represent the direction. 
So let's see if we can do it for the other ones too. For the second displacement vector, if instead we start from west and rotate north, we just have to do 90 degrees minus 35, which is 55 degrees. So we could write this direction, oh sorry, that's not B. We could write this direction as west 55 degrees towards north. And the last one, we can start from east and rotate north. So we know that's 18 degrees, and since it's 90 degrees in the Cartesian coordinate system, this leftover is 72 degrees. So we could write this as east 72 degrees north. Oh, you can't really see that clear clearly, but you saw it on the diagram. So that's how we can represent vectors. So either way is correct. And don't get scared when you see from the back of the book and they have a different answer than your angle. Just double check by doing 90 degrees from it. All right, so thank you for still sticking with me. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe. That way you support this channel and I'm trying to make it grow a little bit. So for question number four, we have a taxi driver. A taxi drives 300 meters south and then turns and drives 180 meters east. What is the total displacement of the taxi? Now, for this, notice that they gave you one displacement which is going south and the other displacement going east. And we have the formula to find the total displacement. The total displacement is just the sum of the individual displacement, so delta d1 plus delta d2 where in this case the first displacement was when the taxi was going 300 meters south which would be your first displacement and again they didn't label that for you but then you could do your own notation just because you're getting familiar with this and turns and drives 180 meters east So our second displacement is 180 meters east. Okay, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I, I want to work with that space there. So our total displacement is from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last, or in this case the second. And this is through vector addition. Because if you notice, the two vectors that we're adding together, delta d1 and delta d2, are connected head to tail. So that's what we do when we're doing vector addition. And the total displacement is from the tail of the first towards the head of the last. But this question is really nice because if you're going south and then east, that forms a 90 degree angle. So we have just constructed a right angle triangle. So in order to find the total displacement, we can take advantage of the Pythagoras theorem and also Sokotoa. So we can use those two to figure out this vector quantity. So first let's use Pythagoras. So c squared equals to a squared plus b squared. So let's label those c, a, b. Three hundred squared plus one hundred eighty squared. Then you take the square root on both sides. And let's just use our calculator now.
which is approximately 350 meters. So our total displacement has a magnitude of 350 meters. And we got that using the Pythagoras theorem. But we're dealing with vector quantities, so that means that you need to find the magnitude and the direction. So, as mentioned before, we can find two ways to represent the angle, but in this case, it's easier to use the one that we have on the diagram from the triangle. So we're going to be looking for theta from Sokatoa. But from this angle, the opposite side is going to be the displacement vector number 2, and the adjacent side will be the displacement vector 1. So this hints that we're going to be using the tan ratio. So from Sokatoa, because we have the opposite side and the adjacent side, we're going to be using the tan ratio. So delta d2 over delta d1. Putting in the values, 180 over 300. To find the angle theta, just take the tan inverse on both sides. So let's put this into the calculator. Make sure that you have degrees set here. We get approximately 31 degrees. But to write the final answer, we have to specify from the north, south, east, and west, so forth. So if we look at this vector, the angle that we found is if we start from south and we rotate 31 degrees towards east, right? So we started south and we rotated 31 degrees towards east. So that's how you find the total displacement vector in this case. So we need to find the magnitude from Pythagoras and the direction from Sokatoa. And this was true because our vector was really nice and they formed a right angle triangle. When they don't, you may have to use the sine law and the cosine law. So not so fun, but still doable. All right, uh, thank you for still sticking around. Let me just drink some quick water. For question number five, they're asking us, what is the total displacement of two trips? The, one of them is 10 kilometers north and the other 24 kilometers east. So notice that they're asking us for the total displacement. So just like before, our formula for that is going to be the sum of the individual displacements. So delta d1 plus delta d2. There are only two in this case, right? And because we are doing vector addition, we're going to connect these two vectors head to tail. The first of these is 10 kilometers north. So delta D1 equals to 10 kilometers north. And we're going to attach it to the head. We're going to attach the tail of the second vector to the head of the first. In other words, head to tail method. And our second displacement is 24 kilometers east. We can call this delta D2. 24 kilometers east and our total displacement is from the tail of the first to the head of the last because that's what we do with vector addition once you connected them head to tail the resultant from the tail of the first to the head of the last vector but we got really lucky here again because this turns out that it was going north and then east, so we formed the right angle triangle. So just like before, we're going to have to use Pythagoras and Sokatoa to find the magnitude and direction of this displacement total vector.
So let's use Pythagoras first. So let's label C, A, B. C squared equals to A squared plus B squared. C squared equals to 10 squared plus 24 squared. Square root both sides. And then we're going to calculate it soon. Okay, let's use our calculator. 10 square plus 24 square square root 26 kilometers so now for our total displacement vector we found the magnitude of it which is 26 kilometers that seems reasonable within the lengths being used here and then to find the angle we want to find the angle of the triangle here which the tail of our total displacement vector makes so here we're going to be using from north rotating towards east. So if we're considering this angle, we can label our second displacement vector as the opposite side and our first displacement vector as the adjacent side. So using Sokatoa, tan theta equals to opposite over adjacent. So 10 theta is going to be 24 over 10. 10 inverse on both sides. And making sure that you're working with degrees, let's put this into our calculator. We get approximately 67 degrees. But the way that we found this angle is from starting north and rotating 67 degrees towards east. Keep in mind that if you had used the east going towards north, you just have to subtract that from 90 in this case. But the question, there's a follow-up to it. For number six, it asks, if you added the two displacement in question five in the opposite order, would you get the same answer? So it turns out that the vector addition does not depend on the order that you add the vectors. So this means that you could add the first to the second or the second to the first. So the order of addition does not matter. But don't just take my word for it. Let's try to see if we can show that. So this is what we had in a diagram. So that's the first method. But if instead we take the second vector as the first one and connect it to the tail of our second one, the resultant is still this diagonal. So if you're to this to scale, and place it on top of one another, notice that it's approximately the same length. So you can do this with your ruler and to verify it for yourself, or you can do the calculations and show it for yourself once again. But here I'm just showing you the visual way. So they are the same. Again, I wasn't using a ruler, but it should work for you. And that's it for this section, and then I'll see you in the, my next video. Until then, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.